How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to another NHL 23 career simulation. Today going through the career of the highly requested Matvey Michkov, selected 7th overall in the 2023 NHL draft by the Philadelphia Flyers. Michkov, an incredibly talented forward, many calling him the next Alexander Ovechkin. So far at just 18 years of age, he's put up some very impressive numbers in the KHL. 20 points in 27 games with Sochi this past season. Some ridiculous numbers with Team Russia through his diff through different levels of competition. A very interesting prospect for many reasons. If the 2023 draft class was just going off of pure raw talent, he would probably be selected second overall right behind Connor Bedard. I have zero doubt that he will play with the Flyers in the National Hockey League. My only question is, when will he come to the league? So in today's simulation, we'll be going through his career. I'll get to his attributes in just a moment, but we'll be starting his career after he gets drafted in 2023. We'll have him sit out for 2023-24, and then we will put him into the league. The Flyers will decide whether he plays in the NHL or the AHL in the 2024-25 season. We'll count that as year number one for this simulation, no matter where he plays. I don't want to wait too long and people say it's unrealistic or start too early and then I have the same problem on my hands. So I say, you know what, let's give him one more year in the KHL and we'll start this career sim here in NHL 23 in the 2024-25 season. In our simulation today, Mitchkov will start off as a 76 overall with high elite potential. Maybe his overall deserves to be a little bit higher, but I don't want to put it too high or else he'll be put into the NHL by the AI general manager right away. I think 76 is a fair place to be, especially when you consider he has such high puck skills and such high shooting attributes but his defense and his physical the two biggest parts of his game that he needs to work on are the lowest defense at two stars low defensive awareness low shot blocking obviously not really big parts of his game low physical regardless of all that he has 86 offensive awareness four star shooting all attributes between 85 and 88 he will also have the puck on a string zone ability as well as the superstar abilities of close quarters it's tricky make a snappy and snipe these x factors these attributes come from from pooling a few different custom rosters together and my own personal opinions. So take it with a grain of salt. I know some people are always debating the overalls in the comments, but that's what I thought Mitchkov should start off as. We'll be following history as a different team, a total hands-off approach, seeing what Mitchkov does with the Flyers organization. Does he carry them to a Stanley Cup with the other pieces like Cam York, Cutter, Gautier, etc.? Does all of his talent and all of his potential get him to become the next Alexander Ovechkin? That's what we'll find out in today's simulation. So if you enjoy it, be sure to leave a like like, let me know whose career you want to see simulated next. Of the 2023 draft class, we've already done Connor Bedard and David Reinbacher, so check those out if you haven't already. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more uploads like these, franchise mode, career simulations, and much, much more. If you enjoy this, you'll enjoy the rest of the channel. It's a great community, and it'll be that much greater with you as a part of it. So subscribe, join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get this party started. And at the 2023 draft, it's unfortunately impossible to keep everything perfectly, perfectly going according to how it went in the real world. But with the third overall selection, the Flyers select Matvey Mitchkov. Bedard going to the Blackhawks, Fantilli to the Predators in this universe, and Mitchkov here at number three to the Flyers. Still a 76 overall with high lead potential. Getting Mitchkov to be drafted by the Flyers has been the hardest part of this entire simulation so far. But he's in the Flyers organization now, and we'll go ahead and hop to when he joins them in the NHL, not for 2023-24, but for 2024-25. The rosters that I'm using are up to date as of early July 2023, but obviously the league will change very much by then. So we'll see how the Flyers look come 2024-25 and where Mitchkov fits into their lineup. Year number one in 2024-25, just a little over a year from where we are in the current present day time of recording. Matt Vimichkov is up to an 80 overall after spending another year in the KHL. At 19 years of age, he signs his entry-level contract and comes over to Philadelphia. As an 80 overall, he had a good year of growth overseas. Puck skills and shooting, both up to four and a half stars. His defense and physical, both up half a star each as well. So those parts of his game are coming along slowly, slowly. Hopefully going to get there. He will start off his rookie season on the first line here in Philadelphia with another rookie, Cutter Gotze, as first line center and Travis Konechny at right wing. Unfortunately, the game often creates lines according to X factors. So that's how you have Sean Couture here on the third line for some reason. Who who knows? Maybe he never plays again. Maybe Ryan Ellis never plays again. Here he is, is as an 85 overall. 
On paper, a great team here in Philadelphia. D'Angelo, 86. Sanheim, 86. Starting goaltender Carter Hart at an 87. I won't look at the team every single season, but just to start things off. Mitchkov at 19 years of age is starting off his rookie season in the NHL, getting first line minutes. No power play units. First or second unit. No power play minutes at all for him. So we'll see if that changes over the course of the season and how everything pans out for this squad in year number one. In year number one, Matt Van Mitchkov's rookie season, the Flyers take a step forward after being in the basement of the league. You know what? 23rd place, not the worst thing for 2024-25. The Flyers go 35, 37, and 10 for an 80-point season. Mitchkov didn't do too shabby in his rookie season as he scored 15 goals and 27 assists for a 42-point season, playing in 74 out of 82 games. After his rookie season, Mitchkov remains at an 80 overall. We'll see if he grows over the offseason. Nothing changing here in the attributes aside from him now having five-star puck skills. So we'll see what else happens over the offseason. Respectable numbers, absolutely, as a 19, now 20-year-old. And I would say with his high lead potential, he comes into year number two looking like a different man. And if you're curious about hardware, I'm sure that Mitchkov got some Calder votes as well as some Lady Bing votes. I didn't notice only one minor penalty in 74 games played for the rookie. Amongst rookie scores, Mitchkov's 42 points placed him fifth. But if you remove the top two prospects who are created by the game, they're generated prospects, he would be third amongst real life rookies. So some Calder votes and I would think even some Lady Bing votes in Mitchkov's rookie season. Year number two, and just as expected, it's a big jump in overall for Matt Vemichkov, but he also has a big jump in his potential, as he is now an 85 overall with medium franchise potential after that solid rookie season, also now listed as a second line forward. Five-star puck skills, senses, and shooting. Defense at three stars, physical two and a half, and skating at three and a half. So ridiculous numbers offensively. We'll see if his other numbers hold him back or if he can explode after a solid rookie season as an 80 overall. Now he's an 85. Still with Cutter Goatsey, who's also an 85, and Konechny, who is an 89. It's a solid team here in Philadelphia, so let's see if Mitchkov's sophomore season will bring them any luck. In year number two, the Flyers find great success as they finish 12th best in the NHL to return to the postseason for the first time since 2020. Six years later, in Mishkov's sophomore season, the Flyers register 92 points, going 41, 31, and 10. Mitchkov played a huge role in the Flyers' return to the postseason as he led the team in goals, playing a full 82-game season, scoring 40 goals and 48 assists, an 88-point season from the now 21-year-old sophomore in the NHL. He took over 100 more shots than last season. He got the power play time finally as well and was logging over 20 minutes of ice time per night. Those totals more than doubled the numbers that he put up in his rookie season, and his 310 shots were among the most in the NHL. In the 2026 postseason, the Flyers went on a lovely little run, reaching the conference final for the first time since they went all the way to the Stanley Cup final back in 2010, 16 years ago, taking down the Blue Jackets in five games in round number one, the Devils in seven in round number two, but then falling in six to the Panthers, who went on to lose to the Avalanche. Mitchkov was once again a big reason why the Flyers did so well as he registered 6 goals and 8 assists for 14 points in 18 games in his first ever NHL postseason. He was a plus 1 along the way and was logging over 22 minutes of ice time per night. Some of the most amongst all forwards on the Flyers. After his sophomore season at 21 years of age, Mitchkov has grown to a 91 overall with that medium franchise potential. An incredible sophomore season which brings his puck skills up to 99 across the board. His shooting to all between 93 and 95, 99 offensive awareness. Oh my goodness. Let's hope for another strong off season so we can get an even stronger Mitchkov headed into year number three on a Flyers team that is looking very, very good. Year number three, and this may be the scariest Flyers team that we've seen yet, as Mitchkov will start off his third season in the NHL as a 91 overall. Cutter Gauthier at a 90, Travis Konechny at a 90 as well. Flyers fans, get excited about your future if this is what you can look forward to. Don't forget about Frost, Tippett, high overalls here as well. But let's get back to Mitchkov, who is a 91 overall, first line forward, medium franchise potential, all those 99s that we saw at the end of last season. This is the final year of his entry-level contract, so the Flyers have to figure out what kind of deal Mitchkov can get after this third season, which is poised to be a new career high. 
Okay, so a lot to say in year number three as the Flyers once again make the postseason. Great news right there as they finish seventh best in the NHL. A fantastic finish for them, going 46-32-4 for a 96-point season. This is the first time since 2011 and 2012 that the Flyers make the postseason in back-to-back -back seasons or more. And this is also their winningest season since they got 47 wins back in 2012. In his third NHL season, Mitchkov went point per game plus for the second time in his career as he scored 37 goals and 46 assists for 83 points in 81 games. Mitchkov was a plus 14 through it all while logging 20, 19 of ice time per night. The postseason, however, was a huge step back for the Flyers as after making the conference final in 2026, they get swept out of round number one in 2027, losing in four games at the hands of the Carolina Hurricanes who went on to lose to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. Mitchkov and his line mates Konechny and Gauthier went pointless through those four games. Four games, negative six, no goals on 16 shots for Mitchkov while averaging 19.09 of ice time per night. A really, really difficult postseason. And it cost the Flyers heavily. Headed into year number four, Mitchkov's overall drops a little bit, down to an 89 overall, understandably so. Puck skills down a little bit, shooting down a little bit, physical down a lot, actually, back to two and a half stars. He will also be needing a new contract as his ELC will be expiring. So good news for the Flyers that they can get him a little bit cheaper, but it will still cost a lot to get him signed on. Will he go bridge? Will he go long term? Let's see what happens headed into 2027-28. Headed into year number four, Mitchkov and the Flyers came to a huge agreement in the 2027 offseason as Mitchkov signed a seven-year contract paying him $14.245 million per season. A total of just a few hairs shy of $100 million over seven seasons, with the salary cap being at $97 million here in 2027. In 2023 language, that would be a contract of about $12.25 million per season. So Mishkov is locked up long term with this Flyers team. He's on the first line headed into year number four. Morgan Frost, his first line centerman and cutter Gotze on the left wing this season, not playing with Travis Konechny. After that tough four game sweep, he is still sitting at an 89 overall to start the 2027-28 regular season, but 99 offensive awareness, lots of high 90s puck skills and shooting. I'm sure that the attributes will be coming back around soon enough and we'll be crossing our fingers for another point per game plus season. Year number four was a tough one for the Flyers as they finished 25th in the NHL to miss out on the postseason. A record of 38, 38, and 6 as they were a 500 team. Despite the poor team record, Mitchkov had a career year here in this fourth NHL season. 35 goals and 56 assists for a 91-point season as he played in all 82 games. He was a plus 3, had 21 power play points, and was logging just over 19 minutes of ice time per night. Surprising that he wasn't playing more. At the end of his fourth season in the NHL, he maintains his 89 overall status. I don't believe his attributes have changed at all over the course of this season. A great year for the personal stats, but unfortunately a post season miss. It's a small sample size so far, but Mitchkov and the Flyers seem to do their best when he can hit 40 goals, so fingers crossed for more of that in year number five. Year number five, and the Flyers are starting to feel the pain of having so much money in their top six. Mitchkov, Gauthier, and Konechny back as the top line here in Philadelphia. But Couturier is down to an 83 overall. Carter Hart, they couldn't afford him anymore. Eric Comrie and Alex Nedeljkovic are the two goaltenders here in Philly for this fifth season of Mitchkov's career. He is back up to a 90 overall headed into 2028-29. All the puck sales between 98 and 99. The shooting power is at 97. Coming off of the best statistical season of his career, Let's see if he can get back to 40 plus goals and if he can bring the Flyers back to the postseason. In year number five, the Flyers return to the postseason as they finish sixth best in the NHL, winning the Metropolitan Division for the first time in a long time, 100 points and a record of 44, 26, and 12. It was another career year for Mitchkov as he was shooting at 15.4%, about 3% higher than he's ever been. New career highs in goals and points. 46 goals, 52 assists, and a 98-point season for the now 24-year-old in a fully healthy 82-game season. The trend continues. Score 40-plus goals, and the Flyers will do very, very well. He was a plus 19 at 22 penalty minutes, 26 power play points, and was logging 19 minutes and 50 seconds of ice time per night on average. In the 2029 postseason, after getting swept out of the first round in 2027, the Flyers make it out of round one, beating the Blue Jackets in seven, but then fall in six to the Washington Capitals in round number two, as the Capitals would go on to lose to the Maple Leafs, who won the 2029 Cup.
Goaltending let the Flyers down in the postseason as the scorers were on fire, namely Mitchkov, who in 13 games registered 9 goals and 8 assists for 17 points after going pointless in the 2027 postseason. Mitchkov also was a plus 1 and was logging 1954 of ice time per night. Also note that he was shooting at 16.7% and the regular season he was shooting at 15.4%, which was I believe a 3% increase from previous years. So if he can keep shooting at that percentage, keep scoring 40 plus goals on this very good Flyers team you can hope for many more good things to come he's back up to a 91 overall all the 99 puck skills the 99 offensive awareness the five star shooting so your number six should just be that much better Year number six, and Mishkov's ready to run it back here in Philly on the top line with Cutter Gauthier and Travis Konechny as his line mates. We know the scoring's great here in Philly, and the Flyers finally filled the hole in goaltending. No more backups here as Vila Husso is the starter at an 84 overall. Mishkov, speaking of overall, is still a 91, all the same attributes that we last saw him having at the end of year number five. Let's see if this is the year where he can hit 50-plus goals and or 100-plus points for 2029-30. In year number six, the Philadelphia Flyers have their best finish yet with Mitch Gov as they finish fourth best in the NHL and win 50 games for the first time since 1986, 44 years later in 2030. The Flyers go 50, 26, and 6 to have an incredible regular season. It's no surprise that Mitchkov once again went point per game plus as he scored 91 points in 82 games, coming in the form of 39 goals and 52 assists. Once again, not hitting 40 though. Now in his sixth NHL season, he's only hit 40 twice. But regardless, the Flyers had an incredible season. He was a plus 20, shooting at 12.1%. As we saw last season, he wants to be getting into that 15% plus. But hey, 12.1, we can take that as well. 22 power play points while averaging just about 20 and a half minutes of ice time per night. In the postseason, Mitchkov goes on his furthest run yet, and what a roller coaster of a ride for the Flyers. A seven game series in round number one, a seven game series in round number two, but then their luck runs out as they fall in seven in the Eastern Conference Final to the Buffalo Sabres, who go on to win the Stanley Cup themselves in seven games. What a run! Mitchkov absolutely did what he could on that postseason run as he scored 10 goals and 23 points in 21 games, the only point per game plus player on the Flyers, doing so while logging 20-21 of ice time per night. After this sixth season in the NHL, Mitchkov is coming off of his deepest postseason run yet. He maintains his 91 overall status. Uh, attributes are going a little bit all over the place as a few have dropped a little bit. The shooting's gone down a tad. Regardless, he is still incredible. He will have four more years at 14 points. 245 million and the future is looking very bright in Philadelphia. Year number seven, and the Flyers are looking strong. Still with that scary top line, Konechny, Gotze, and Mitchkov. Mitchkov heading into his seventh NHL season is still a 91 overall. The Astros look the same as how we last left them off once again. The shooting going down a little bit for a few things. Still five stars. Puck skills all 98 or 99. Still the 99 offensive awareness as well. His skating has come along quite well. He has 91 durability. He's played three consecutive 82 game seasons, so we'll see if that can continue, as well as whether or not he could get a fourth consecutive 90 plus point season. Ooh, boy. In year number seven, the Flyers missed the postseason after having a great first half. They were poised to make it in a top three spot in their division. They had an abysmal second half and finished the season in 22nd place, going 36, 35, and 11. That second half struggle was likely headlined by Cutter Goetze having some sort of injury. There goes a big first line presence. He had 47 points in 58 games. Mitchkov himself struggled. He played in 78 games. 28 goals and 44 assists. A 72 point season from Mitchkov. Lowest totals of his career since his rookie season. Shooting at only 9.4%. Wow. 15 power play points and averaging one second shy of 20 minutes of ice time per night. After this seventh season, Mitchkov is still a 91 overall, but his franchise potential has dropped to medium elite. We'll see if that has any impact on his offseason, if any. Still the five-star puck skills, senses, shooting, all that good stuff. Headed into year number eight, the Flyers will hope for more health and also some more luck, as again, that low shooting percentage really showcasing an unlucky second half. 
Year number eight and Mitchkov and the Flyers are ready to forget about that abysmal year number seven. Mitchkov starts off this season as an 89 overall. That elite potential brought him down a little bit over the offseason. Still the five-star puck skills, senses, and shooting with physical down to two and a half stars. That's a big drop. Skating down, defense is down. So we'll see how he does, especially with a new first-line center in Nick Schmaltz. 35 years of age, signed to a one-year deal. Cutter Gotze on the left wing as well as connecting has been moved down to the second line. Connect and Mitchkov separated. We'll see how that pans out for the Flyers here in this eighth season, 2031-32. In year number eight, the hardships continue in Philadelphia as Mitchkov misses the postseason in back-to-back -back years for the first time in his career. Despite the Flyers finishing 19th in the league with a record of 39, 36, and 7, it was not enough. Once again, Mitchkov, a lackluster season. 81 games played out of 82, 28 goals and 47 assists for a 75-point season. A little better than last year, but after three consecutive 90-point-plus seasons before that, very, very odd numbers. He was shooting at 10.3%, so a bit of an improvement there, but still shooting like a good 50 shots less than usual. He was logging 19.09 of ice time per night. I'm not sure if it's the Flyers' line management, or what's going on. It's not just Mitchkov. There were a lot of other players who were doing a lot better in previous seasons. But regardless, after eight years in the NHL, Mitchkov now misses the postseason in back-to-back -back years. For the first time in his career, his elite potential has locked in now as exact elite potential. 89 overall. I don't think his attributes have changed too much since the start of the year. 75 points isn't anything to sneeze at, but not what he has shown himself to be capable to do. So moving into year number nine next year, Konechny will be out of a contract. Goatsy will be moving into the last year of his contract things in Philadelphia could be changing and hopefully it will be for the better Year number nine, and in the 2032 offseason, the Flyers had about 30 million to spend, and they spent it all right. Timo Meyer now in the lineup, Marco Casper in the lineup. Still very weird lines. Hopefully, the AI balances them out over the course of the season. Matt Carnado at an 85 on the fourth line, while 78 overall, Robbie Fabry's on the second. But I digress. The first line in Philadelphia is now Cutter Gautier, Matty Beniers, and Matt Ve Mitchkov. He's at an 89 overall at 27 years of age. Same attributes as we last left him off with as they have likely plateaued around this area. Two and a half star physical, 98 offensive awareness, a few things dropping even a bit further than we had previously seen. So with two years left of that big contract and coming off of a couple seasons that have been very lackluster, let's see if the additions that the Flyers made will be enough to get them back to the postseason in year number nine. That's more like it. In year number nine, the Philadelphia Flyers return to the postseason as they finish eighth best in the NHL, as they should with a lineup like that, with 98 points and a record of 46, 30, and 6. Okay, there you go. Matvey Mitchkov registers his first 100-point season of his career as he ties his career high in goals with a 46-goal season, add in 54 assists in a fully healthy 82-game campaign, and he scores 100 points for a new career high after a tough couple of seasons. He was a plus 17, 30 penalty minutes, shooting at 17.6% as well. That'll do it. 10 game winning goals, 10 power play goals, a very round season, exactly 20 minutes played per night as well. Very round numbers here for Mitchkov. In the 2033 postseason, Mitchkov and the Flyers didn't have much luck as they fell in six games in round number one to the Montreal Canadiens, who went on to lose to the Senators, who won the 2033 Cup. In his fifth postseason birth of his career, this was just the second time the Mitchkov did not make it out of round number one. A disappointing finish after a great regular season, but Mitchkov didn't quite pull his weight. Through those six games, he only scored one goal, shooting at 4.8%, as opposed to the 46 goals shooting at above 17% in the regular season. One goal, three assists, four points in six games, and a negative six to boot, while averaging 19.52 of ice time per night. Heading into what will be his 10th season in the NHL, Mitchkov is a 91 overall after the first 100-point season of his career, shooting senses and puck skills all at five stars skating and defense also both at four while physical at three some of the best all-around attributes that we've seen from Mishkov so far in his career so hopefully the Flyers can keep most of the group together in the 2033 offseason a lot of expiring contracts headed into Mishkov's 10th season 
Year number 10, and the Flyers did some good work over the offseason. Cutter Goats, a new contract at a 91 overall. Travis Konechny, one more year. This guy, Gilbert Grandpierre, signed to a contract that will pay him $12.495 million. He's a young 88 overall. Brock Besser, Alex Tuck. So, all right, Mitchkov has a group. Let's see what they can do. Matt Vey is a 91 overall. All the attributes that we left him off with at the end of last season. Five-star puck skills, senses, shooting, four-star defense and skating, three-star physical. Keep in mind, this is the final year of the seven-year contract that he signed of almost $100 million way back when, paying him $14.245 million per year. After this year, he will be an unrestricted free agent, so we'll see. Can the Flyers do enough to convince him? Does Mishkov want to stay for more? He's made the postseason five out of nine seasons. He's made two Eastern Conference Finals. Let's see what year number 10 has in store. In year number 10, the Flyers returned to the postseason as they finished 11th best in the NHL with a very respectable record of 45-32-5. Mitchkov scored 45 goals or more in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time in his career and was one point shy of hitting 100 again. 45 goals and 54 assists for a 99-point season in a full 82 games once again. He was also a plus 23, only 20 penalty minutes, shooting at 16.8% to boot, and he was logging an average of 20 minutes and 13 seconds of ice time per night. In the postseason, the Flyers made it out of round number one for the first time in four years as they beat the Red Wings in six games. But for the second consecutive season, they are eliminated by the Montreal Canadiens as they fall in six of themselves in round number two. And the Canadiens go on to win the 2034 Cup. In the postseason, Mitchkov was a playmaker as he only scored two goals in 12 games, but added 15 assists for 17 points in 12 games. Wow. A plus eight, shooting at 8.3%. Didn't shoot a lot, only 24 shots, and was logging 19.50 of ice time per night. After this 10th season in the NHL, Mitchkov, at 29 years of age, is a 91 overall. His contract is up. He has spent 10 years with the Flyers. Three years on an ELC, a big seven-year extension. Now he potentially hits unrestricted free agency. We'll see what he and the Flyers can hammer out as his attributes are still as high as ever. He's coming off of back-to-back 45-plus -back goal seasons, 99, 100 points. We'll see what happens in the 2034 offseason headed into year number 11. Headed into year number 11, Mitchkov decides to stay with the Flyers as he signs a six-year extension to stay in Philadelphia, paying him $16.065 million per year, a total of almost $100 million, just like his last contract, but for one less season. If you want to translate it to current-day NHL numbers, this is an AAV of about $12.39 million in, with today's salary cap in 2023. Mitchkov signed on for six more years at the age of 29. Gilbert Grandpierre and Cutter Gauthier on that that first line Texier glass Besser on the second the rest of the lineup taking a little bit of a hit to be able to afford Mitchkov but hopefully it's worth it as he's coming off back-to-back of -back -back 45 plus goal seasons a 99 point year another good postseason run the Flyers are on the brink Mitchkov's made the postseason in six out of his ten seasons and he wants to make it for a third consecutive time for the first time in his career headed into 2034-35 in year number 11, fresh off of his new extension, Mitchkov reaches the postseason for a third consecutive season for the first time in his career as the Flyers finish sixth best in the NHL with 100 points and a record of 45, 27, and 10. Oh my goodness, Mitchkov showing why he's worth all that money! Wow! Another fully healthy 82 game season. The man is, he has 91 durability. I know it's a bit unrealistic, but come on now. 42 goals, 75 assists, and 117 points to blow his career high out of the water. Another 40 plus goal season. It was the assists where he blew up. Grand Pierre on that first line has been all the difference, it seems like. 117 points, a plus 40, 38 penalty minutes 17.3 shooting percentage all while averaging exactly 20 minutes of ice time per night once again wow how about that to kick off the new extension for mitchkov as the flyers head into the postseason with a lot to prove Mitchkov's 117 points were also enough to tie him for the most in the NHL with none other than Connor Bedard, who's now on the Jets in 2035. Unfortunately, Bedard will win the Art Ross as he scored more goals than Mitchkov. That's the tiebreaker, but still a huge accomplishment for Mitchkov in his 11th season as he sits atop the NHL. 
In the postseason, the Flyers had an incredible run as they made it out of round number one in six games against the Red Wings. Once again, same as last year. And now again, faced the Montreal Canadiens in round number two. They were down three games to two. They came back and won it in seven, going to the Eastern Conference Final. But they fell in five games to the President's Trophy winning New York Islanders who went on to win the Stanley Cup in seven games. So that was Mitchkov's seventh postseason berth through his 11 seasons, the seventh in the last 10 years for the Flyers, and the third Eastern Conference Final in the last 10 years as well. As is becoming a trend, Mitchkov was a little bit more quiet than you would have expected in the postseason, especially in terms of his goal scoring. Four goals and nine assists for 13 points through 18 games. He was a plus one shooting at 7.5% while logging over 22 and a half minutes of ice time per night. Quick shout out to Cutter Gauthier as well, who scored 115 points this season and won the Hart and the Ted Lindsay. No awards for Mitchkov, unfortunately, this year, but an incredible season. He got a lot of votes, and at 30 years of age, he maintains his 91 overall status, headed into year number 12 where the Flyers will not want to do what they did the last time they made the Eastern Conference Final and that was taking a huge step back. Year number 12, and Mishkov has a new line mate on the first line here in Philly, always with Cutter Gauthier as per usual, coming off of his Hart and Ted Lindsay Trophy win in 2035. Martin Natchez, new first line center here in Philly. Grand Pierre moved down to the second line. Questionable decision after what that first line did together last year, but we'll see what Philly can do with this top six. Braden Point added to the team as well. Mishkov, 91 overall, now at 30 years of age, coming off of three consecutive 40 plus goal seasons, a career year of 117 points wanting to stretch his postseason streak to four years as well there's a lot to play for this season as Mishkov wants to finally make that elusive Stanley Cup final in year number 12, the Flyers avoid a big scare as they were around 500 at the halfway point in the season, but they went on a tear in the second half to finish 10th best in the NHL and a record of 46, 30, and 6 to make the postseason for a fourth consecutive year for the first time in Mitchkov's career. Mitchkov once again scored over 40 goals and over 100 points as he registered 41 goals and 61 assists for a 102 point season through 82 games, tying him for the team lead with Grand Pierre. Hopefully he got back to the first line because that was a weird decision. Cutter Gauthier, again, that's another season that's been cut short due to injury. He only played in 64 games. He was over point per game as well. Mitchkov was only a plus one, shooting at 13.8% and averaging about 20 and a half minutes of ice time per night. In the postseason, the Flyers made it through the Devils in round number one, taking them down in six games, but then fell in seven, once again at the hands of the New York Islanders in round number two this time. So they had two years of losing to the Canadians, and now two years of losing to the Islanders. The Islanders would go on to lose in the Stanley Cup final to the Kraken. The Flyers' scores came through quite well in the postseason, as Mishkov was tied for the team lead in points. Five goals and nine assists, 14 points in 13 games. A plus two shooting at 11.6%, while averaging 19 44 of ice time per Once night. Once again, all eyes are on Flyers management over this offseason to see what they'll do to try and get this team over the hump. Year number 13, and the band is back together on the top line here in Philly. Mitchkov, Gauthier, and Grand Pierre all together. I'm excited to see what this line can do. The rest of the team taking a little bit of a beating overall wise. Braden Point is an 86 at 40 years of age. This guy Tierney looks interesting. He's a sniper with four and a half star shooting. So fingers crossed the depth in Philly will be strong enough. But the top line will be carrying, led by Matt Vey Mitchkov, 91 overall. Hand eye and passing down to 98. But everything else still looks as high as ever so we'll see if this can be a fifth consecutive 40 plus goal season for Mitchkov and we'll see if the Flyers can also return to the postseason for what would be a fifth consecutive year in year number 13, the Flyers maintain their status among the best teams in the league as they finish second in the NHL with 103 points and a record of 48, 27, and 7 to win the Metropolitan Division. The Flyers had quite a season as their top line definitely came through. 41-year-old Braden Point scored 86 points. They acquired Quinn Hughes at the deadline. He has multiple Norris trophies in this timeline. But Mitchkov on that first line was actually a little bit behind the rest of the, the, his couple other line mates. 34 goals and 59 assists for a 93-point season through a full 82-game season. His fifth consecutive season of this many points or more. But Grand Pierre had 57 goals. Cutter Gauthier had 108 points. So Mitchkov lagging behind a little bit. He was a plus 43, shooting at 13.7%, and was logging 20-13 of ice time per night. 
But in the 2037 postseason, the Flyers fell in a six-game series in round number one at the hands of the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo went on to lose in the Eastern Conference Final to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Toronto Maple Leafs. Mitchkov was point per game. He did what he could. Two goals and four assists for six points through six games. A negative one, shooting at 7.4%, and uh, over 23 minutes of ice time per night. My goodness. Headed into year number 14, Mitchkov, now 32 years of age, still maintains his 91 overall status. A bit of a dip on the goal scoring, but he's still putting up the points. He still has the attributes. That first line was incredible. Shout out to Cutter Goatse, who won another heart and another Ted Lindsay this season as well. So let's hope that this exit in what was a fifth consecutive post season birth will not be enough to hold the Flyers back. Year number 14 and the Flyers have some big changes over the offseason as Mitchkov and Gauthier are ready to run it back but Grandpierre has moved on. He was an unrestricted free agent and he is no longer here. Timo Meyer back in the Flyers organization. He'll be the new first line partner for Cutter and Matt Vey. Mitchkov at 32 years of age is still a 91 overall. Not too much has changed over the last few years. If you've been keeping track I find the shooting categories change the most between like 91 and 95. They're currently all 94 to 95. By the way Quinn Hughes also signed on here in Philadelphia. So hopefully he and all of his point production is as well as all of his Norris trophies will bring the Flyers some luck headed into year number 14. Year number 14 and all is well in Philadelphia as they make the postseason for a sixth consecutive season. This is their longest streak since they had a streak from 1995 to 2006 here in 2038, a sixth consecutive year as the Flyers finish fifth best in the NHL with 102 points and a record of 47, 27, and 8. Mitchkov returned to his 40 plus goals, 100 plus point ways as he scored 43 goals and 58 assists for a 101 point season. He played in 80 out of 82 games as he missed a game for the first time in six years. He was a plus 33 shooting at 17.1% and averaged just four seconds shy of 20 minutes of ice time per night. In the postseason, the Flyers did not make it past the second round for the third consecutive year as they took down the Rangers in five in round number one, but were then promptly swept out of the second round by the Carolina Hurricanes, who would go on to win the East, but lost in seven in the Stanley Cup final to Anaheim. Also note that this was the second time that Mitchkov faced the Hurricanes in his postseason career, and it was the second time that he and the Flyers were swept by them. Mitchkov, once again point per game, 4 goals, 5 assists, 9 points in 9 games, the only flyer to do so. A plus 1 shooting at 8.7% while averaging over 21.5 minutes of ice time per night. At the age of 33, Mitchkov still a 91 overall. As I mentioned previously, you can see the shooting attributes fluctuate now between 91 and 96 to kind of compensate for some other attributes that are going up and down like physical and skating as he gets older. But Mitchkov, with 2 years left on his contract after this season, wants to see success. Yes. Year number 15 and the Flyers are going all in. Mitchkov has two years left on his contract. Cutter Gauthier re-signed to a two-year extension. The entire first line has five-star shooting as this guy Cam Tierney will play on the left wing of the first line with Timo Meyer now gone. Cutter and Matt Vey up there, good old friends. Mitchkov will begin his 15th season in the NHL, still as a 91 overall with all those incredible attributes. The forwards took a little bit of a hit here in Philadelphia, some 69 overalls on the fourth line because Funnily enough, David Reinbacher has been signed here in Philadelphia. In the Reinbacher sim, Mitchkov spent a little bit of time in Montreal. And now in the Mitchkov sim, Reinbacher spending a little bit of time in Philadelphia. So we'll see how that works out as the 5th and 7th overall picks in 2023 are united for year number 15. Wow. In year number 15, the Flyers take a huge step back as they finish 3rd last in the NHL. 30th among the 32 teams with 69 points. 31, 44, and 7 was their record, snapping their postseason streak at six years. Mitchkov led the Flyers in scoring, but it was the worst offensive season of his career since his rookie season, not to mention the fewest number of goals since his rookie season as well. 23 goals and 48 assists, a 71 point season in 81 games played. He was a negative 26, shooting at 9.4%, while averaging just a couple seconds shy of 20 minutes of ice time per night. Now at 34 years of age, wait for it. Okay, he's still 91 overall, thank goodness. The puck skills, the shooting, it's all still up there. Hopefully the offseason doesn't give him too much of a hit. Headed into the final year of his contract, 2039-40 will be a big one as he and Cutter Goatze, who also had a very difficult season, will be in that final season. Year number 16 around the corner and the Flyers have to do a lot to get out of the basement of the league. 
Year number 16, and Mitchkov is finally seeing a little bit of regression. Now at 34 years of age, he is down to an 89 overall, still with exact elite potential. Puck skills 97 to 99, shooting five stars, offensive awareness down to 98. All that is still fantastic, but physical down to two and a half, skating at three and a half, defense three and a half. Those attributes shouldn't matter too, too much in simulation. We'll see how he does now in potentially the final year in Philadelphia as his contract will be expiring. Cutter Gauthier's deal also expiring. He's down to an 86. The new first liner here in Philadelphia to play with Gauthier and Mitchkov will be Griffin Wild, who was the fourth overall pick in the most recent 2039 draft. The lineup is interesting. I'm not sure why Kemmel is a fourth line centerman. Defense this guy Peyton Stepan, who's an offensive defenseman. He's won a Norris or two. He's playing with David Reinbacher. The third pair looked very suspect. Ronnie Kessler in 88 is the starting goaltender. If you're curious for how things pan out for this 2039-40 season, lineup-wise, possibly Mitchkov's last in Philadelphia. That's more like it. In year number 16, the Flyers improved 15 spots and finished 15th best in the NHL, returning to the postseason with 91 points and a record of 44, 35, and 3. Mitchkov got back to his 40 goal self as he scored exactly 40 goals and added in 47 assists for an 87 point season through a full 82 games played. A plus one shooting at 14.6% while averaging 20 21 of ice time per night. But in the 2040 postseason, the Flyers do not make it out of round number one. They lose once again for the third time in Mitchkov's career to the Carolina Hurricanes. This time they made a series of it as they lost in six, but still losing in the first round. The Hurricanes went on to lose to the Capitals, who lost to the Senators, who won the 2040 Cup. You know what? Minchkov pulled his weight in the postseason as he scored four goals in six games, no assists, so a four-point postseason. He was a negative four, shooting at 16%, while averaging 19-16 of ice time per night. At 35 years of age, heading into his 17th season, Mitchkov is down to an 88 overall. The puck skills all now between 94 and 96, starting to drop slowly. Still the 98 offensive awareness and five-star shooting, but Mitchkov, he will be an unrestricted free agent after his big six-year extension has now expired. Cutter Gotze also a potential free agent. So a lot could be changing for Philadelphia and Matvey Mitchkov into the final years of his career. It's been a great time in Philadelphia. He's made the postseason in 11 out of 16 seasons, but he has never made it further than the Eastern Conference Final, and he may be looking to go elsewhere to finally find that cup. Oh my goodness. In year number 17, Matt Bay Mitchkov hits unrestricted free agency and signs a two-year deal with the Metropolitan Division rivals of the Philadelphia Flyers, the Columbus Blue Jackets. A huge step for Mitchkov to be leaving the Flyers organization after 16 years, but as I mentioned, 11 years and nothing more than a couple of Eastern Conference finals. If you're curious as well, Cutter Gauthier also left the Flyers and signed with the Florida Panthers. Two years at 10.45 million, so just over 20 million for two years for Mitchkov. That would be closer to something like seven, seven and a half million in today's NHL, but still a very lucrative contract for him at 35 years of age. I just gotta take a second to show you the Blue Jackets team. This is an incredible squad. Everyone within the top six is signed for at least two years. So that's great for Mitchkov and his current timeline. Walker Kemp is the first line center, former 12th overall pick, 87 overall. And this guy, Aino Santala, 92 overall on the right wing, former fourth overall pick of the Dallas Stars. You got an 88, an 85, another 85 on the top six even an 84 and an 85 in the top nine things that we weren't seeing in Philadelphia on defense we see an 88 and an 85 on the top pair plus one of my favorite names in franchise mode history Sylvain Audi Marchessault who's here on the second pair incredible name and between the pipes you have a 90 overall who's signed on a good contract for seven years as well so the team here in Columbus looks extremely well built and hopefully Mitchkov can be the missing piece of their puzzle as they try to get the Stanley Cup as well in year number 17, the Stars in Columbus shone brightly as the Blue Jackets finished fourth best in the NHL with 106 points and a record of 51, 27, and 4, the winningest season that Mitchkov has ever been a part of. However, Mitchkov suffered the first major injury of his career as he only played in 39 out of 82 games, missing 43 games. In those 39 games, however, he scored 14 goals and 22 assists, 36 points in 39 games on that powerful first line. He was a plus three, shooting at 15.1% and averaged 18.41 of ice time per night, but really unfortunate that on such a strong team, Mitchkov could have made it that much stronger. But now, he's fully 
fully healthy and we're headed into the 2041 postseason. And of course, if you're curious, 36 points in 39 games would have been a 76-point pace for Mitchkov over a full 82-game season. And get excited, because in the 2041 postseason, the Columbus Blue Jackets have made it to the Stanley Cup Final. They took down the Capitals in six in round number one. Mitchkov finally beat the Hurricanes for the first time in his career in a postseason series in six games in round number two. They then took down the Leafs in five games in the Eastern Conference Final. And after 17 years, Mitchkov is finally in a Stanley Cup Final. You'll also notice the Flyers did not make the postseason as they finished towards the bottom of the NHL. But fingers crossed for the 2041 Stanley Cup final Blue Jackets versus Kraken. Let's go! In the 2041 postseason, the Columbus Blue Jackets are Stanley Cup champions. After 17 years, Mafe Mitchkov is finally a Stanley Cup champion, and he does it in his first year out of Philadelphia. Sorry, Flyers fans, but his first year in Columbus on that stacked team leads to a Stanley Cup championship. He was indeed that missing piece in Columbus, and he has a Stanley Cup ring at long last. Mitchkov was integral in the Stanley Cup run as he went point per game through 23 games. 7 goals and 16 assists for 23 points in 23 games. Despite being a negative 9, he had only one minor penalty. He shot at 17.5% and he was also averaging 2 seconds shy of 21 minutes of ice time per night at 36 years of age. Mitchkov with a Stanley Cup ring is now an 88 overall with top 6 potential. Headed into the final year of that 2 year contract he signed with the Blue Jackets. Year number one, a Stanley Cup championship. We'll see what year number two has in store as he still has five-star puck skills, senses, and shooting. But as you can see, things starting to fluctuate a little bit more. Also, just a quick note, just to put it out there, because I know there's always a few people who might be thinking it. This is always pure, pure, pure simulation. I have zero control over the simulation. It'll be a great story to say, hey, finally the Blue Jackets win a cup and Mitch Cop gets his ring. But I can promise you there was zero influence on my part on the Stanley Cup run. What a story. Year number 18, coming off of a Stanley Cup championship, Mitchkov is ready to go once again here in Columbus. His second year as a Blue Jacket, he's still on the top line, and I have to say this is an incredible lineup. Over the offseason, the Blue Jackets add Adam Fantilli, who's just scored 126 points a couple years ago. He has all kinds of individual awards in his career. He's 37 years of age now. The third overall pick from Mitchkov's draft, so Mitchkov once again reunited with members of that draft class. Santal has a 93 overall. Obey who won the Conn Smythe as third line center. The entire top nine is between 84 and 93 overall. Ridiculous lineup here in Columbus. The defense is definitely passable with some good X factors and still that 89 overall here between the pipes just to give you a quick update on the Blue Jackets. Mitchkov is an 86 overall with top six potential. His role is now that of a second line forward, still maintaining his five-star puck skills, senses, and shooting, but physical down to two stars, skating at three and a half. After missing over half of last season due to injury let's hope for a fully healthy year number 18 for Mitchkov and let's see if the Blue Jackets can repeat as Stanley Cup champions but why would things make sense right in year number 18 the Blue Jackets just barely make the postseason at the deadline they were around 500 but they make a strong push in the last 20 games or so and finish 16th best thankfully propped up by a very weak Eastern Conference. 87 points and a record of 42 37 and 3 gets the defending champions back into the postseason at 37 years of age, Mitchkov looked good out there, scoring 65 points in 78 games, coming in the way of 27 goals and 38 assists. He was a plus 13, 12 pony minutes, shooting at 13.8%, while averaging the lowest ice time of his career, 1548 per night on average. Oh my goodness, and how about this for a storyline? In the 2042 postseason, after just making it in, the Blue Jackets take down the Rangers in six, the Islanders in four, the Red Wings in seven for a Stanley Cup rematch against the Seattle Kraken. I sim through the whole thing a bit more quickly, not watching it. I only went to the end, and I see that the Kraken take down the Blue Jackets in a seven-game thriller after the Blue Jackets beat the Kraken for the 2041 cup in six the kraken beat the blue jackets in the 2042 cup in seven 
You just can't make this stuff up. After not being able to reach a Stanley Cup final in 16 years with Philly, Mitchkov and the Blue Jackets make it in back-to-back -back years. Mitchkov scored 22 points in 24 games. He was a huge part of the postseason run. Eight goals and 14 assists from the veteran. He was a plus six, one minor penalty, shooting at 10.4%. And at 37 years of age, he was only averaging 15.44 of ice time per night. Should have put him out there a bit more. He was putting up those numbers with limited ice time. Mitchkov headed into what will be year number 19 is still an 85 overall with top six potential retirement is definitely on the horizon but I think he could definitely do another year he'll be headed to unrestricted free agency he's had an incredible run here with the Blue Jackets back-to-back -back Stanley Cup final appearances so I'd love for him to stay in Columbus but we'll see where unrestricted free agency takes him five-star shooting senses and puck skills he's still worth a pretty penny in year number 19, Mitchkov hits unrestricted free agency and signs with the Boston Bruins. I'm sure it was no hard feelings in Columbus. I checked out the Blue Jackets. They just have way too many good young players who they have to pay money to. So Mitchkov being 37 years of age, it makes sense that he moves on and he can go to a team where he's still a first liner. Speaking of money, Mitchkov's deal with the Bruins will pay him just over 12 and a half million over two seasons, clocking in at an AAV of 6.26 million. Mitchkov at 37 years of age finds himself as the first line left winger here in Boston with 92 overall Jonathan Mathers as his centerman and Ulf Peterson as the right winger at an 84 overall. The top nine though is strong, 85, actually the whole forward core, no one lower than an 81 overall, even 85, 84 on the fourth line. I like this here for the Bruins. Defense, if you're curious, not so good and goaltending in 83 and 81. All right, but it's a strong forward core in Boston and hopefully Mitchkov can add to it. He's an 83 overall headed into his 19th NHL season top nine potential listed as a third line scoring forward but he doesn't care about titles still the five star puck skills senses and shooting physical however down to one star skating at three stars same for the defense but he brings a lot of experience to the table back-to-back -back Stanley Cup final appearances a Stanley Cup ring he still scored 65 points last year let's see what he and the Bruins can do in 2042-43 in year number 19, Mitchkov misses out on the postseason for just the second time in the last 11 years as the Bruins finish 25th in the league. 78 points and a record of 35, 39, and 8. As you can see, the offense was very strong, but the defense, goals against per game, was abysmal. Second worst in the league. Mitchkov, however, had a resurgence this season as he put up numbers goal-wise and point-wise that we haven't seen since his days in Philadelphia. 80 games played for the 38-year-old and he scores 31 goals and adds 52 assists for an 83 point year even plus minus on a horrible team so something to be said about that only 10 penalty minutes 12.7 shooting percentage all while averaging almost 20 and a half minutes of ice time per night at 38 years of age Mitchkov is now down to an 82 overall still the same five star everything but the physical keeps going down the skating keeps going down he has one more year on his contract but will he want to play it out after such an abysmal season here in Boston let's see what the 2043 offseason has in store. Year number 20, and we are running it back. Matvey Mitchkov has a huge offseason, eats well, trains hard, and at 38 years of age, he bounces back up to an 85 overall. Despite his bottom six potential, his physical now at one and a half stars, five star puck skills, five star senses, five star shooting, skating at three stars, defense at three and a half, incredible awarenesses, 97 offensive, 90 defensive. This is the the final year of the two-year deal he signed in Boston. Will it mean retirement after this season? Maybe going to the KHL? We'll see what happens. He's still a first-line winger in Boston. Mathers as his first-line center, and this guy Cody Lawson, a playmaker on the left wing. Last year, their downfall was the defense. They do look a little bit better defensively, but we'll see if it's enough to get them into the postseason for this 20th year of Mitchkov's career. In year number 20, Mitchkov returns to the postseason, just squeaking in as the last team in the East, despite a pretty solid enough record. 17th best in the NHL with 87 points and a record of 41, 36, and 5.
Mitchkov has still got it at 39 years of age. He plays a full 82 game season, 21 goals and 50 assists, not shooting as much or as lethally in his older age, but 50 assists, 71 points. We'll take that. Negative seven, 12 pony minutes, shooting at 7.9%, while averaging 1940 of ice time per night. The Bruins are still trusting him out there. Headed into the 2044 postseason, which may be the last of his career. But in the 2044 postseason, the Boston Bruins are swept out of round number one by the Washington Capitals, who went on to lose to the Rangers, who won the 2044 Cup. Mitchkov was invisible in the postseason, as through those four games, he only registered one assist, no goals on 10 shots. He was also a negative six, while averaging 16-16 of ice time per night. At 39 years of age, after 20 years in the National Hockey League, Mitchkov is down to an 80 overall with bottom six potential, listed as a depth forward. Still the five-star senses, but puck skills and shooting down to four and a half. Defense at three, skating two and a half, physical at a half star. 67 body checking and strength. Oh my goodness. Mitchkov is out of a contract. And I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back home to play a couple more years in the KHL, a la Pavel Datsuk or some other Russians in NHL history. But we'll see what the 2044 offseason has in store for Mate Mitchkov. And in the 2044 offseason, Mitchkov does indeed call it a career, retiring at 39 years of age after 20 seasons in the NHL. He goes out having played 1,574 games, scoring 675 goals, 990 assists, for a total of 1,665 points. I think that this makes a lot of sense for Mitchkov's timeline. He goes out after 20 years in the NHL. He's still an 80 overall, coming off of a 71 point season in year number 20 with the Bruins he can still have a little bit of gas left in his tank he'll bring that back home to Russia play a couple of years in the KHL a la Pavel Datsuk perhaps I think that makes a lot of sense for him if we take a little bit of a deep dive into his career now we saw the games played goals assists and points he goes out with a plus minus of 234 in his career never higher than 43 never lower than negative 26 so usually could be counted on for a solid plus minus only 533 penalty minutes over the course of his entire 20 year career never more than 44 penalty minutes in a season as few as two in 74 games in 2024-25 his rookie season Mitchkov took 5,172 shots over his 20 seasons in the league as few as 93 in 39 games but over the course of a full season as few as 196 and at as many as 323 shooting at 13.1 percent he shot above 17 percent three times in his career and and as low as 7.5, 7.9, a few single digit seasons. 90 of his 675 goals were game winners. 121 were on the power play. 315 power play points. He was notorious for scoring 20 plus per year. One shorthanded goal in his entire career and two shorthanded points. He averaged 19 minutes and 43 seconds of ice time per night. Nothing too wild. Never more than 20, 29 of ice time per night. That's pretty crazy actually for being such a uh, prolific goal scorer as few as over the course of a full season we'll say as few as about 18 and a half 1548 with the Blue Jackets, but that season was cut short. No, that was not that one of those seasons. So we'll say as few as 1548. He played over 31,000 minutes in the league. He took a few faceoffs actually when called upon. Over 2,000 faceoffs taken, but only 41.91% on the dot, understandably. He threw over 2,000 hits. Mitchkov's physical attributes were always his lowest, but he threw as many as 166 hits over the course of a single season. Uh, some years 27, 28, 30, for sure in the later years but in his prime he was throwing the body around at five foot ten over two thousand hits only 349 blocked shots makes sense that's not what he's out there to do 859 giveaways 1703 takeaways very responsible defensively i bet he would have gotten some selkie votes out there wow not the hallmark of his game absolutely not as you can see some years uh, a lot more a lot less takeaways even more giveaways but some years man he turned into quite a player when you look at uh, the, all the hits and the 
takeaways. He had a well-rounded game. Looking at his playoff stats now, Mitchkov, he played 177 postseason games. He scored 62 goals and 105 assists for 167 points. It's very interesting to see that in the postseason, he was a negative 16 over the course of the 14 postseason berths. 46 pony minutes, shooting at 10.9%, lower than his regular season numbers. Seven game winning goals, 11 power play goals, 25 power play points, averaging 20.06 of ice time per night, so a bit higher in the postseason. 35.5% uh, on the faceoff dot, 270 hits, 44 blocks, 81 giveaways, 192 takeaways. So of course he had some great runs. He could usually be counted on for point per game. 23 points in 23 games when he was when he won the 2041 Cup, and 22 points in 24 games when he lost in the 2042 Stanley Cup Final. Had that one deep run with the Flyers, the Eastern Conference Final, 23 points in 21 games, but never got further than a couple of Eastern Conference Finals with the Flyers. He had to go to Columbus to capture that Stanley Cup. As per usual, the games played is likely the most unrealistic thing about the simulation. He was playing a full 82 games very consistently. Only really missed much time once in his career. Aside from that, never lower than 74 games played. So that's the one thing. Even I had injury sliders up, his, just, his durability took control. And he very rarely got injured. So I think his numbers in the NHL probably be around the, that number for the goals scored, 675. But I think the games played are going to be a lot lower. Speaking of goals scored, he never scored scored more than 46 he did it twice so of course in the real world he may score 675 goals but I think he'll do it in such a fashion that he's getting 50 50 plus 50 plus 60 plus as opposed to a lot of 40s 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 over 82 game seasons he also had 10 assists shy of a thousand once with 75 usually in the 50 range we'll get the 82 game averages at the end and his points he once scored 117 points that tied him for the NHL lead but no art Ross, no individual awards, unfortunately. 102, 101, 100 points and more four times in his career. Aside from that, often in the 90s and the 80s, well over a point per game in his career. Speaking of numbers, what we can do now is take Mitchkov's career numbers in 2044 and compare them to the current NHL record books in 2023. Obviously, a lot's going to happen in the next 20 plus years, but just if you want an idea of where these numbers would rank Mitchkov... His 1,574 games played would put him 14th all-time. His 675 goals would put him 14th all-time. His 990 assists would put him 14th all-time. And his 1,665 points would put him 9th all-time. And speaking of all-time numbers, Mitchkov would go out with a couple of franchise records for the Flyers as he scored the most goals in franchise history at 582 and also scored the most points in franchise history with 1,410. And thus concludes the 20-year career of Matt Bay Mitchkov in the National Hockey League, ladies and gentlemen. Drafted in 2023, making the jump to North America in 2024, and playing until the end of 2044. Over those years, making over $230 million, one of the highest career earnings that we've ever seen in a career simulation. 16 years with the Philadelphia Flyers, playing almost 1,300 games with them. 582 goals, most in franchise history, 828 assists, and 1,410 points, also the most in franchise history. In the postseason, he had a lot of opportunities. He made two Eastern Conference Finals, but no Stanley Cups or Cup Finals. Over 126 games with the Flyers in the postseason, he registered 47 goals and 74 assists for 121 points. After spending 16 seasons with the Flyers, Mitchkov signed a two-year deal with the Blue Jackets. 117 games played over those two seasons, 41 goals, 60 assists, and 101 points. In the postseason, he made back-to-back -back Stanley Cup finals, winning his first and only Stanley Cup in 2041 with the Blue Jackets, 45 points over 47 games. He then headed to Boston for the final two years of his career, 162 games played, 52 goals, and 154 points, always around point per game even after leaving Philadelphia. Not much to show in the playoffs as the Bruins were swept out of their only postseason berth with Mitchkov in the lineup. But when you bring it all together, Mitchkov's total numbers, 1,574 games played, 675 goals, 990 assists for a total of 1,665 points, and he also took 5,000 
1,172 shots. Over an 82-game career average, that would be good for 35 goals and 52 assists, so 87 points per year on average. His best years, obviously, being those years of 45 goals, 100-plus points. He also averaged only 28 pony minutes per season and an average of 269 shots per year, shooting at 13.1%. That shooting percentage isn't anything too crazy as that puts him somewhere like 250th in NHL history for players with 200 goals or more. But interesting to note that his 13.1 shooting percentage is 0.2% higher than Alexander Ovechkin's current shooting percentage of 12.9. So if you're interested in making Mitchkov Ovechkin comparisons, there's one right there. You could also take into consideration Mitchkov's points per game as he scored an average of 1.0578 points per game. That's 42nd all-time among players who scored over 500 points. Ovechkin is 30th all-time in points per game by those same standards. So Mitchkov 42nd, Ovechkin 30th. Moving down to Mitchkov's career postseason numbers, he made the playoffs 14 times in his 20 seasons. Over those 14 berths, he played 177 postseason games, scoring 62 goals and 167 points. And finally, we see his career honors. He retires as the Flyers' all-time leader in goals and points. If you compare his numbers today, there'd be a lot of top three, top five for other stuff. But Cutter Goatse was a huge part of the simulation, Sean Couturier as well. So in this timeline, his only record records are for goals and points and don't forget his Stanley Cup championship with the Blue Jackets in 2041. I also found it interesting that through Mitchkov's 11 postseason appearances with the Flyers, he never once faced the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, hey, take that for what you will. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 20-year career of Matvey Mitchkov on HL 23. As always, take it with a big grain of salt. If you ask me, I think he'll score similar numbers, but in much less games played. You saw in the simulation, he only scored 100 points or more four times. He never reached a 50-goal season. So I think in an average season in Mitchkov's career, he'll likely score more goals and more points in less games but if he were to retire with almost 700 goals and over 1600 points i don't think he'd mind that either so ladies and gentlemen thank you for taking the time to enjoy this career simulation let me know down in the comments whose career do you want to see simulated next be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed leave a comment with what you thought was the craziest part of the simulation subscribe if you haven't already to be made aware of all of our uploads all of our nhl 23 career simulations franchise mode breaking news and analysis in the real world of hockey and much much more so once again Thank you for taking the time and looking forward to seeing you again in the next one.